the attention to detail. It's what defines a valued quality product. The human touch was once expected in society, yet today it's a luxury. And that's what this is, an institution with almost 100 years of history and with an enduring vision which values performance and innovation just as much as luxury. It's the perfect harmony of modern systems and technology interacting with generations of human skill. This is a look at how a legendary brand continues its life into the next century. This is Inside Bentley. I look at this place and it looks like a modern facility with, with quite a few machines, but there's not, it, it, when you think about it, there's actually quite a few people with their hands on the cars as opposed to, say, a Volkswagen factory or a BMW factory. Oh yes, in comparison to a higher volume facility, this is quite unique. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, men who actually are using their skills and technologies to build this vehicle. And we are different because uh, of the volumes of the vehicles. We actually are only applying the spot 50% of the spot wells automatically and the rest are applied with the men within this facility. And there are also some brazing and welding techniques which we use which are, they also apply. So what's the difference between welding and brazing? You said it was, welding it, actually melds the With two? a welding um, we would actually, you melt the substrate itself and it's more of a structural joint. Okay. Here the structure of the car is provided uh, with the uh, material underneath the joint. Okay. Here we're actually just doing a cosmetic surface joint to uh, provide a continuous surface, a class surface, uh, exterior surface, so the yeah. customer w shouldn't be able to see where this joint is on the vehicle. And that's the aim, is to make sure that this uh, vehicle looks as effectively crafted from a solid lump of material. Whereas in fact, uh, with assembly process, we have to use number of sheets to do yeah. that. And this is a way of um, achieving that appearance and design intent. Um, so we apply the braze and then we actually have to spend a lot of time finishing the surface off to make sure that we give that appearance to the customer. So how many, how many people do you actually have working in this facility right now? Um, currently it's uh, uh, around I think 85 people uh, okay. within the facility. Those are welders, those are... Yes, we have um, a welding staff here, we have people metal finishing, we have uh, also the technical support staff as well, um, non-destructive uh, testing and teardown people or, and also the uh, measurement uh, staff as well who again are looking to ensure we have the right quality, looking the, the vehicle is a correct dimension and also looking at making sure the welds are of the correct strength as well. But obviously what we want to do is shipping out a vehicle here, we want to be assured that we're providing the correct quality. Um, out into the marketplace as well and that's critical. We are using craftsmanship to give you the manufacturing processes but we're using technology to make sure it is as good as any other vehicle out on the road today. And you know part of your testing process is that you actually sacrifice some chassis. Oh yes we will do. Um, we have um, various stages of testing. We have the, on, uh, the ultrasonic non-destructive testing but again you always have to go back to physical samples so uh, a number of times a year we actually take a body out and cut it down and test each individual spot well to make sure that joint is of the correct size to give us the correct strength and the performance out in the marketplace as well. Um, in fact I think we're, we're doing one at the moment but we actually do have to ensure that yes um, each of those joints is correct and if there are any variations we'll go through and then evaluate the process and make sure we're still in control. And there are lots of procedures to make sure the air, we get the correct air feed, the gases in the, uh, provided for the welding, yeah. uh, the tip uh, diameters for doing spot welds are correct. So there's lots of checks in place to again make sure that process is under control. And it's all built to order, you're not building a chassis unless someone has a name on it. Yeah, I mean, we will, it depends on which country you're supplying. Some countries like, the customers like to go in and buy one off the shelf. Other places want to, um, uh, people to order their own specific car as well. It, yeah. So it depends, we have to meet that requirement and demand. We, when we're recruiting people, especially welders, we'll be looking to their, their individual skills um, and, and experience as well. We also have our own training, so we don't allow anyone to do any, say, MIG or MAG welding on the, on the body until they've actually gone through a, a training course here to make sure they are going to apply that weld to the sufficient quality, which will mean they're doing some trial, uh, trials on, on coupons of material to show that they actually can provide the required quality in those areas as well.
So here we've just uh, brought the roof down, the body size down onto the underframe. Um, and you can see that's where one joint would be on the brace. So you can see the joggle where one panel sits over the other one. And the same here. We obviously in the framer, these, we have a, all the clamps obviously hold these panels together. These are just loosely tied together at the moment. Got but it. once again to the framing, these are all held in a geometrically stable condition. That's the gap. Again, that's the, that gap will move once everything's jiggled into place because this is only just, just basically roughly held in position at, at this stage. But the underframe comes in, the body and the roof are all um, obviously loaded through into the framing station. Held together, we have a number of automated spots and a number of manual spots which go in there to hold it in a geometrically stable condition. When the clamps are released, then you can go around and get it re-spot across from the line over there. So to put all the welds there. But here we have the two panels and we have the MIG actually applied to That's warm. <laughs> Hot surface. So here we're actually applying that molten material. We then spend time finishing that surface to take it back. So we then give a appearance of a continuous surface there as well. Um, and we have a process. It looks fairly rough here, but what we're trying to do is minimise the air pockets within the material as well, because when you grind it back, you'd expose any holes. So on a structural joint, you wouldn't necessarily worry about that because it's all covered. But because we're taking out the surface, we've got to make sure we minimise any turbulence within that the de deposition of that material as well. So over many vehicles, we've been optimising the process to give us the best possible condition. So yes, it's fairly, you've got one station here where we've done a lot, most of the brazing. We've then got another six stations here where we're actually then grinding it back and giving it the correct cosmetic appearance. So from the point of view of cost, it's minimal is actually applying the material. The rest of it is making sure it's a quest, the correct surface quality to again give us a, a good visual appearance after paint. That area there is where we do the respot line. So where we've got two robots that we both we do some respot both on the underframe and also on the frame vehicle as well. So here you can see the progress from the applying the initial MIG braze, then going through to to filing and then through to the final um, polishing of that surface to give you a, a continuous surface so you can see from the point of view of feel what work we have to do to actually yeah. improve that. And it even goes back here too. Yes, this is obviously on the door shut where someone opens the door. So the, and in the Bentley, you find actually which door is more important? Where would the owner sit? If it's being chauffeured around, which you would do say in, in the Far Eastern countries, this the rear end is more important than the front. But in America or Europe, you tend to have owner drivers, so they're more obviously um, looking, the critical is more front for them. So obviously, in our case, both areas are critical to make sure we get the highest quality as well. In the final stages before paint, the Mulsanne body undergoes one last inspection. In a chamber of light, it's not a robot or a laser scanner that defines whether a body is ready to go to the next step. It's actually the human eye the final touches to a clean canvas. Much like a painter stretching his canvas over a frame, there is an uncompromised attention to detail. Any imperfection, any flaw, will ruin the final piece. And funny enough, the perfection can only be seen with the human touch and feel.